All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, for part two of this painting, CLC Paint YouTube channel. <sighs> you know, I think we're gonna do some trees. Yeah, we'll just do what we do. Cause that's, you know, maybe, maybe we'll do some trees and some bigger trees and some reflections in the water, some dirt, rocks, all kinds of things. Now. I'm going to use this as the tapper, but we don't need the tapper yet. I think we'll make some background foothills. Now, if you'll remember from the first part of this, we've got our uh, liquid white up here in the corner, normal white there, or titanium white is thicker. The phthalo blue our mixture of our crimson and blue together, what we use for the mountain and the shadow color for the mountain. Now I'm gonna pull through our shadow color like so, because we want a light, medium light color for foothills in the background right here. Now, since we have a misty area that's hopefully brighter than the mountain and the water, we can put this medium color right underneath. Hmm. Sometimes you gotta step back and take a look at it. All right. Come down in. And we'll, we'll let the other trees take care of that. See, not dark enough. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab, I'll show you, ready? We're gonna grab some of our black or our purple. Since that's too dark, we're gonna pull it through the lighter color here and we'll let that lighten our darkness up. And we want to have enough paint on the brush to actually put paint on the canvas, right? See how I ran out of paint right there? So just continue loading the brush as you need to and then mix it with your white. So you grab some white, put it down right there. Need my paper towel. Now, whoa, got a touch of crimson on the bristles there. Careful with that, watch. See, crimson on the canvas. I like crimson though, so. Don't worry about it. Grab some purple, mix it with the white, and continue making our little little foothills here. This is supposed to be a thousand million trees, little forest at the bottom. Little forest at the bottom of our mountains there. Mm -hmm. Gonna come all the way across. Now, if you had enough paint loaded on the brush here, you could do it all in one try. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, this is getting kind of silly to me. I was hoping it would, I was hoping it would go on easier. So we're gonna take the brush and instead of pulling down now, put a little more paint on there. 
that's one of my problems. I'm always using so little paint. The more paint you use, the better these things come out sometimes. Now we're just going to pull up a slight bit. We don't want to ruin this, this separator here. Just a slight bit to give the indication of the little pointy tops of some pine trees or a forest way back in the distance here, right? Now, sometimes works better than other times. All righty. The key thing is that's not too dark because we want something darker in front of it. Now we'll use our tapper. And what we want to do is tap the bottom of it. So that way it creates a little misty area. But I think we might need a touch of liquid white in the brush. Yeah, see that? That'll make a real misty area. Push hard enough to bend the bristles. Mmm, see soft and misty at the bottom. Now, now we do another layer. But this time, I'm gonna use the fan brush. This time we're gonna use a fan brush and it's gonna be darker. For the first time, we'll start to get some green to play into the picture. Uh, where will I put my green? It's always a good question. Hmm. We'll need more later, but for now, for now we'll just use that much. Back there, show you what we're doing here. So we've got our green and our purple. I'm going to take a bit of green and mix it with the purple. That's going to give us a real dark color, real dark color. Wiggle it, pull it, and I'm going to do, hmm, maybe I'll start on this side. Let's do, it's not going to work. I'm going to need a lot of paint to do that. Let's get more paint in the brush then. We'll load all of the green and all of the purple. Now we've got more paint in the brush. Wiggle, pull. Let's see if it works this time. Kind of. We've got one tree, another tree. <laughs> All right. See how that starts to make, if you've got enough paint in the brush, that will happen really nicely. It's been a while since I painted. So 
So I'm being a little, being a little stingy with my, Hmm. Take the green. Put some more onto the palette since we'll be using it. Take your knife. All right, now we're going to do some mixing, make a pile here. Blue. Pick up all of this. Throw that down. Crimson mixed with the blue. So we've got some paint. Right up there, almost all of the green. Mix it right in with it there. <laughs> Mix those colors together, scoop it up, lay it down, scoop it up, mix it together, lay it down, and we'll use that. Hmm. We'll use that. Now, try this again with three times as much paint in the brush, and we'll see what kind of result we get. Mmm, thicker, darker. And we're going to have to reload instantly. Wiggle, pull. There's one. There's one. Reload again. I have to reload a lot on this technique. See, though? Starting to get a good forest. So hold the brush like this, pull down, and kind of, you know, touch the bottom in there. Flip it over, use the other side. Other side. I don't want to ruin the misty part at the bottom here because that's what separates each layer. That's what we're practicing here. Practicing separating the layers of trees. And then we'll miss the bottom of this as well. And it'll be reflections. If these tops go too high, it'll block, it'll block it back there. It'll block it. So try to, that's why in the beginning I tried to put my mountain up a little higher instead of being in the center of the canvas. Cause then you end up with no room down here to play with. And if you have the right amount of liquid white to begin with, all of these steps will, I think, be easier than what it looks. What's the easiest thing? The thing that you practice the most at. That is the easiest thing. Maybe back here. There's just, no, oh, it didn't work. She came out as a line. Hmm. Oh well, try some new things. Maybe there's just, 
I was gonna make it a tiny little area. It goes way back into the distance there. We'll keep it like it is though, because we're still still trying to do that. Wiggle, flip it over, wiggle and pull. So it sharpens, sharpens it. So I got real skinny there. And then we'll let it get bigger coming back out over here. Let's look a little sideways. Sometimes with the sideways canvas, I get a little, get a little sideways. There we go. Definitely works better when you have more paint in the brush. Lots of paint in the brush. I still don't even have enough, really. Because the second you pull it down, it makes it makes it all wide and fuzzy instead of sharp like you want it. Which is why you have to constantly reload. Constantly. Apparently the secret for this part is have them blended enough to where it's not telephone poles like I kind of have going on over here. So we're gonna have to blend that side more, but that's all right. This, this part right here helps kind of blend it in. And if you've got liquid white on the canvas, it'll blend with your color blend with everything else there'll be a whole bunch of happy blending going on you see if that's the furthest back then the land's going to come towards us and down whoops something like that <clears throat> see how it feels like it's getting closer Distant forest underneath the mountain. Now I think we'll make a few, make a few distinct ones. Like maybe that tree. Like that. And maybe that guy. Maybe this one. That's a few, maybe a one bigger one. Couple over there or something. That'll have to be blended off. All right, what we want to do now is create a misty mistiness. Look at that, sorry, the paint all bubbling up in the bottom of this brush. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a tough one to clean. <laughs> tough one to clean, all right. Don't know where to set it. Just set it right there. Hope it doesn't roll off. 
Now we got to do some misting. So I'm going to grab another touch of the liquid white. Whoa, a little bit much there, but that's okay. That liquid white along the bottom there. And scrape off. extra paint there, had a little too much on the canvas. So that way it'll blend off much better. Touch of liquid white. Oh yeah. Now, we're just gonna tap in the bottom. The mist it. See the liquid white will blend. See how it's getting lighter. A lot of tapping, but see, it makes a huge difference in your picture. Huge difference. Because now, now, I mean, you could use that as reflections and we could call that the water. It's beautiful. But now when you do these trees, like these guys, they'll be in the front, in front of the distant trees in the back. So let's try that out. Touch this one up, left and right, down to there. All right. A little bit more paint in the brush, and we'll make this tree. And don't destroy the mist in the back because that separates this little land and you can make little land just by pressing up Ding, wiggle load some more paint in the brush and We'll have another little tree right here. He comes down, down to there. Let's tap in some grassy areas underneath of him. I'm gonna do the same thing all the way back up to there. See how it comes at an angle, goes upwards like it's going into the distance. Yeah. I want this tree I'm in front. Make sure this color's dark, 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 because we want it to be in front of the distant area back there. Now. Yeah. Bring this tree, make him a little bigger, I think. Anyways, got to reload. Hmm. And bring this land area a little bit sticking out there, like it's in front of that. And lower. Our brush is so frayed out, it needs to be filled with paint again and sharpened. There we go, we'll have one big guy lives on the edge over here. Now, see my pile's all been pulled out flat. 
So in order to use it, scrape across it, even get that bit of white in there. Mm. That flat out. Reload the brush through the paint, wiggle, pull, and I don't want to block you too much while I make this tree. Oh, that's that's a wide top there. Maybe it needs to be a little bigger. Wow. This brush is getting old. All right, we'll do some reflections and work from there. And then we'll do a little foreground tree that blocks off. But see just how easy you can make a background foothill underneath the mountain that comes down into a forest, but how that forest can also be separated from closer trees in the same layer with a little mist area in there. See that mist area is key and it makes it look real misty going back in there. See, I've got the paint all the way up to the metal on the fan brush. I might need be in for a new fan brush. Might be in for a new fan brush. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Now, this was the brush that we used to put the foothill in back there. I think we can use the other side of it to pull down some reflections here. So I think, oh, actually that made it purple. Not going to do that. Don't want purple reflections. I want them the same color as the blackness that's on there. So I'm going to use my blender brush. I'm going to want reflections of these trees. Tap in a little color. Just like that. See, just kind of a, <clears throat> just kind of a representation. Don't worry about getting perfect on it. Wide at the bottom and skinny at the top. Now, that little base coat in there, we can come back, pull these straight down, across. Don't destroy your blue in there. If you pull this down too much, it'll cover up all the blue and it'll turn into this weird gray black color. Not what you want. Now just once, unless you got too much paint. If you got too much paint in the brush, come to a paper towel and do this. Get rid of that. See how all I have is a little bit. Get rid of that extra, then come across just once or twice.
It leaves horizontal brush strokes. Whoops, see I wiped out the bushes there. We can come back and get those. Now, I think we're gonna wanna do, we're gonna wanna do some highlights, which means we're gonna need some yellow. Where do we need some yellow? This thing's been leaking oil out of the bottom. I had to keep it in a bag. These big tubes are they're intense, that's for sure. Let's put a big old, big old bunch of yellow. I'll show you what that means here in just a sec. What does a big old bunch of yellow mean? <laughs> this boom big old pile of yellow there now since we already have a greenish color going uh, this brush is purple though i guess we'll use the other fan brush if you don't have two fan brushes clean the previous one get all that black or you can just mix the black straight with the yellow here. I think we need some, I think we need some trunks. Trunks, yes. So we'll take some brown, any brown you wanna use. I personally like the lighter browns, but I'm out of those. So we're gonna to have to use Van Dyke Brown, which is a darker. which is a darker one, it almost becomes gray when you mix it with white. Uh, paper towel. Now, get a little roll of brown and put it like so. trunks in your trees, pointy top. I like to do it upside down. It feels a little bit more uh, controlled to me. And wherever you got, you know, a specific tree like this, put a little trunk. Not good, not good. A little extra brown on the knife. That guy. That guy. That guy. Don't do a pure solid trunk. Tap like some there, some there, and then leave a couple open spots because part of the trunk is covered by the tree. Yeah, there's one there, one there. random slices. All right, now, now that we've got that, wipe that color off, grab a tiny bit of white, just graze it through the brown. See how it's kind of mixing on the knife there? So you have a whitish brown color and come back through and just touch. See, so just barely, just barely, not the entire tree, just, just here and there. So that way, so I know I'm blocking in there, but that way the white blends with the brown and you get yourself 
a white and brown trunk. Kind of add some highlights here and there, which will stand up against the next highlights that we're about to do. Now, now that we've got our yellow pile, we can take our fan brush, see? Pull it through the yellow, both sides. This will blend with what's already on the canvas. So, I'm just gonna take the corner, instead of straight on the corner, or that corner, whatever corner is better to you. Same way we made the trees. And so the lights on the right side of the mountain, then so will our highlights be. You see that looks pure yellow for me, but don't worry because it will blend. It will blend. See, the brush is already black on one side. Now, you don't take the black and put it right back in the pile. Set it next to it. See that I smeared it off the brush. Pull it through a different pile of yellow. So it turns it back to yellow mostly and then reload. So that way you don't destroy this pile. It will become very dark very quick if you're not careful. I'm gonna want it a bit more green. So I'm gonna to touch through the green there. See that? I'm going to tap that right next to the pile. Pull through it a bit. Come back to this one since this will be my mixed. Ooh. Hmm. Might almost be time for some lunch. All I have was coffee so far today. Sweet, now that we've got a mixed green on there, and this is starting to add color, we'll just add a touch to that guy. See, it's still a bit too yellow, but that's just fine. Sap green, the yellow. I think the best green comes from, uh, blue, blue mixed with yellow. But remember your, remember your misty area. Don't destroy. Some nice little grassies just by pushing up. See, I used the side that was pure yellow and then push it up back in there. And then layers. See how this layer is separate from that layer. And then this one will come down to there, all right? And then once the color blends on the brush to a darker, we'll work underneath of your highlight. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And just adding in some grass areas in the back. It's darker on this side, apparently. <laughs> ah, the smell of paint. Ah, see, I almost destroyed this pile. Let's come on this other side over here. And get some of that color. Make some little highlights over there. And then these 
colors will will be down in the water as well. Right, let's load that pretty thick now. Mm-hmm. Love a green yarn. Just try to stick on the right side mostly. Dark at the bottom there. It's like a shadow under the tree. Yeah, it looks super dark for you. It's because this side's so bright. It's making this side look dark. Yeah, there we go. This is tough to control. It kind of just kind of just does its own thing. There we go, that guy. Ah. Almost left this guy out. Can't do that. Can't do that. It's a little messy at the top there. Hmm. All right. I like it. There's a variation. It's highlights, tons of shadows. I think we just need, I think we just need something right in here. It looks weird, doesn't it? Maybe there's a bush there. How's that look? Hmm. Looks awfully weird, doesn't it? Yeah, that's fine. Too much of the same color. There, took the shadow out of there. Or the mist. Hmm. Yep. Now, just below these. Ooh. I'm going to touch some green into the water. Because it it would be reflected if it was there. Just barely a few touches and come back to our reflection brush. Softly this time. Soft. Just a tiny bit. I don't want to pull through that because that's grass there. So I'm gonna be careful to careful to not ruin that part. Boom. Boom. And boom, very softly, once across. You don't want this to smear over. You just want it to be, just want it to be shimmery. And there we go. There we go. Now, we'll do some dirt and some water lines. Need the knife. Go through some brown, just like we did for the trunks. This is a funny tree trunk by itself here. <laughs> and we don't want to cover up our reflections. So we're just back here in the distance, just a touch. And then as it gets closer, we'll begin pulling just a thin layer of the dirt back in here. Just a thin layer. Ding. And see, once again, it comes down the hill, not straight down, but just 
gradually so it feels like it gets closer. Just gradually. I'm going to turn this real quick. Sorry, it's so dark. That comes back into the corner there. Back into the corner there. And then this sticks out here. Yes, precisely. Precisely as we wanted it. See, to get the knife the right angle, so it's not, so it's not like this, because the cable's down here, I have to pull it back so I can have the knife vertical when I perform the, perform this maneuver here. <laughs> I'd show you if it wasn't going to tip off the table. <laughs> and pull some dirt there. Yeah, I like it. Then, oh, got some on my thumb there. On my nail. All right, grab it. Just a bit of white, just a little bit. And we're gonna graze over the top of this, but I wanna slightly, I wanna slightly blend it with the brown here, just barely. So that way, what we got is a tiny bit mixed, not pure white, but it's got a little brown. In it. So this, so that way it mixes. Stick in there. And just let the canvas take what it wants. What does that mean? What does that mean? Let the canvas take what it wants. Don't force it on there. Just tap it and let the canvas pull off from the knife what it wants or what it accidentally pulls off of the knife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, some bright ones. See so yeah, how this is the brightest one? If you add pure white on there, to make some bright ones. And it makes it look like there's shadows and brighter rocks here and there. Like maybe that's a bright rock right there. Maybe this corner is a bright rock. Because I like that little spot there. See, I love how this looks way closer than right there. That those are the things that make the big make the big difference. And you kind of let them do themselves because I didn't plan on that happening. It just kind of ended up being the way it worked out. Now, last, not least, our liquid white pile up here. So, clean off your knife. Normally it wouldn't be blue, just pure white. We'll work with what we got going. But see that, that's a perfect shape there to see how you cut just a tiny, tiny bit of liquid white on the knife. Because, and then usually I'll put this point of the knife against the canvas first so I can control how much of the line actually goes onto the canvas. So I'll kind of put it on and then rest it against it to control the line. See that? That's a helpful little, that's a helpful little piece there. Never done that before. All right. And then you cautiously 
or wildly, whatever feels better to you, saw some little lines of white back in there. If you don't wipe your knife off though, randomly, you may end up with your waterline color picking up the color that's on the canvas because you're scraping it. So wipe the knife a little bit, get some more liquid white on there. And you can do these however you want. Which would seem contradictory to instruction. <laughs> however you want. Unless you want to listen to how I said. I like to start with the smallest ones in the back first and then work my way forward. Because you can get messy when they're closer. Because they're bigger. All right, let's finish this up for you. If you've watched this far, I truly appreciate it. I hope you give this one a try. I mean, we could still add a big tree over here that kind of blocks off the corner there. Does some foreground area, but just for the sake of time, I'll call this video good after these little water lines here. Yeah. Make that one sticking out there. And see it goes a little bit back up in that corner there. Love making these little recessed spots or the back in there sections. And then that. Comes down in the corner there. And maybe just a little ripple. Just a little ripple or two there. Maybe one back there too. Hmm. Sometimes I get carried away with these little ripples. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's one, it's one beautiful scenery, folks. Ding. I really suggest you give this a try. It's a lot of fun. Shoot, just popped out of my mind as I was going here. So the real key thing I wanted to try out was these misty areas in between each layer. And how it can be taller, like these trees are higher than those ones but they're still behind them. To whereas this tree is taller than all of them and it's in front of them. It's tough to make both of those things work at once. And that was my intention on trying that out here. And I love this water's edge, the bright, bright little highlights and water lines and dirt. Mm, so good. If you got value, consider subscribing. Smash the like button, leave me a comment and let me know what you think, that might help me out. And also, if you're interested in helping me out, purchase one of my paintings. Hit up the Etsy shop, which will be linked down below or the website if it's not frozen. Uh, I think Shopify is like 30 bucks a month or something. So every now and then, every now and then I'll freeze, but the Etsy shop will be there, check that out. Help me out. You could even own this painting if I've listed it by the time that you check it out. But please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Anyways, thanks for watching. Take care. Till next time.